Hey everyone, Matt here from Pyramine, back with yet another breakdown. Uh, today, we're gonna kind of dig into something interesting. Uh, the word of the day, ladies and gentlemen, I think today is, hey, that's the word of the day, hey. Why? Because the one song that comes out and says, hey, and forces you to freeze and just go, what? what's going on in the radio? Why is there silence? The Chainsmokers. So today we're gonna look at the song Closer by the Chainsmokers. Um, these guys are great. I, I've heard a lot of different kinds of styles from them. They seem to be in this kind of poppy, uh, mellow, snap-driven, trap-induced pop territory now, which is um, really working for them. Big fan of the song, which is why I chose it. Uh, and people say, well, Matt, isn't that song simple? It's not complicated. Where's the complexity? Ah, sneaky. Sneaky little bastards, these chain smokers they are. I'm gonna take a look at it right now. So what are they doing that creates complexity and why does the song work? And uh, the answer is they are leveraging the hell out of one chord. More importantly, they're really leveraging the hell out of one scale, okay? The whole song is in one scale. Arguably, the whole song is in one chord. And the chord is da -da -da -da, F minor seven nine. That's not a simple chord to begin with. It is what we call an extended chord. A simple chord would be F minor. And if I did this, I'd be really bored. I'd be saying, hey, I wish you would move your chord a little bit. It's really boring sitting here as one F minor. Doesn't really work. So what they do, which is I think brilliant, interesting, and yet kind of simple at the same time, is they look to other notes within the scale, okay? And so the scale, starting with just F minor, and, and there are uh, three modal F minors. There's F Aeolian, F Dorian, F Phrygian. We're going with the standard F Aeolian, which is F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, eight. Okay, or octave. So that's the thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for notes that are gonna show up throughout this song. And the overall complexity concept here is that the entire scale is available. You can have it manifest within the chord. You can have some of it manifest in the chord, some of it manifest in the bass, some of it manifest in the chord and then the bass and then the rest in the melody. And I think between those three things in this song, you're gonna see every single note of this scale. I love when that works out. So, starting with the chord, F minor seven. Now, for those of you who don't mess with sevens, this is beautiful territory. You should definitely start messing with sevens. All we're doing is taking the chord, F minor, skipping the next note in the scale, adding this one. You'd skip the next note, add this one, skip the next note, add this one. This kind of triadic or leapfrog technique where you build a scale, one, two, three, four, five, and then you only use, say, the one, the three, and the five, and then the seven, and then eight, nine, okay, 10, 11, okay, 12, 13. See what I mean? So if you take the scale from this octave and bring it all the way up to this octave, so it's this, you start one through eight, and then you can go all the way up nine through, uh, well, I guess the next one would be 16. So what we're gonna look for are one, three, five, seven, nine, 11. And I don't think the 13 is used or my favorite, the sharp 13. I don't think, well, it's not really the sharp 13. This would be a flat 13 technically. Uh, I don't think the 13 shows up very much, if at all. Um, so that's the chord. The chord is, and you can see on the screen, I'm adding the pinky and then taking it away. So it's torn. I went to a bed and let them at you. Drink too much and that's an issue, but it's okay. So even that one extra note takes it from being really boring to at least there's some variety. And then they have I'm leaving the C off just for simplicity to show how this kind of motion within a chord creates a little melody. So what you have in this little mini melody in the chord is dum, 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 a nine, 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 seven, five, five, seven, seven, flat seven, four, four, five, five. Ooh, see it is right there. 
the 11 and the 4 are the same note. So if I use two hands, you get... Which is going to sound a little bit... If I mute this piano now... Actually, let me mute this piano and then just play it. And I'll put the keyboard here. Okay, in my little rendition, I didn't do that, but I'm pretty sure in the main song you've got at the very end. Now, while that's going on here, when we get to this section, I think this would be the pre-chorus, uh, and I'll use the pre-chorus as the chorus as well. Um, so it kind of does this and tells its story. And then somewhere around here, you get this pre-chorus melody. term people might use is called pedal chords. Like you put your foot on the pedal and it plays that chord and then you do all this other stuff at the same time while the chords are just hanging out there. Right? You can have all kinds of fun just playing the other notes of the scale. In this section, that work is going on, although it's very, very subtle. It's actually happening in the bass. So while they've been hammering you with this F, like this has been there the whole damn time, all of a sudden, the low end kind of falls out from underneath you. And the way it falls out from underneath you is in the bass, flat seven, our old friend, the Aeolian flat six. So what ends up happening here is if we just solo the bass and the chords, I'll play along with, you get to somewhere around here. Now that's gorgeous, but it's also something you've heard a bazillion times before. That's why I think everyone does it, is because it works! Does it make it cliche? Only when you get tired of it. So what's really going on here is that we're using F, E flat, D flat, and the low end, really just D flat and E flat, the flat six, flat seven, which are the same as these two guys here. All they're doing is taking these. So if I could, if I wanted to, again, every note in the scale represented, we haven't really seen this one very much. We've seen one, two, one, three, five, seven, nine, or two, and we've seen the four. We don't really haven't seen the flat six or the six at all yet. You're gonna see it here in the bass. Okay, so while this is doing, first chord in particular that I think is really rich. If you took this and played it up, played it up again, you have this. This is normally a really ugly sound, but like in cooking, if you take kind of a ugly flavor and wrap it with a lot of really sweet and beautiful flavors, you get this beautiful uh, complexity in, on the palate, and I think we're doing the same thing here in the chords. It's just that you have the F minor 7, and then F minor 7 add 4, or 11. F minor 7 add 9, 4. And then, if I do this with the thumb, F minor 7 add 11, add 9, 11, and 13. That's the whole damn scale in a chord. <laughs> it's just that it's kind of hidden, and this is really where the complexity is, is that the entire scale is being used. It's just that you see it, parts of it here, and here, and the other parts of it down here. Okay. So that's at least two different things that we've looked at. Uh, one, that every note in the scale can be represented, and then two, uh, this concept of pedal chords, where a single chord can have other notes kind of dance, like the chord stands here, and then the other notes kind of dance around it. Zooming out, complexity times, well, two and a half, really. One, extended chords using all the notes on the scale. But 
whether in the chord or the piano or the vocal or all of the above. So using every single note in the scale is one thing. Second thing is this pedaling concept. Chord stands still, other things happen around it. In this case, note stands still in the vocal harmony and the other vocal uh, harmonizes against it. Um, the third concept you've actually seen before, for me at least, and, and certainly from the songs we've looked at, is that um, when you either look at this section or if I replace these two leads uh, with the baby pull me closer in the back seat of your rover, in that section it can use actually all of the rest of the parts that I've got here. So the notes are these three notes, A flat, B flat, and C. They represent the one, two, three, four, five of our scale. But they don't really sound like that. What they really sound like is a lullaby, like. We may be in F minor, but the vocalist says, screw that, I'm in A flat major. It's relative modality. So the Aeolian scale is built on the sixth degree. So of six, you'd go up to seven, up a half step back to one. That's F and A flat, just like it would be A and C. Relative major, relative minor. While the chords and drums and all those guys are doing their thing, we're also getting one, 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 two, two, and two, three, two, one, and then five. All right, that's the Chainsmokers. I will see you next time. If your music is struggling and you're finding that your progressions aren't kind of living up to these standards that um, I'm sharing with you from great artists that I've been lucky enough to listen to, um, by all means, reach out. I've been doing some one-on-one -on -one sessions with people and it's been really helping them out, in the, both in terms of workflow, in terms of writing process, uh, in terms of chords and harmony and how to build something that's strong enough and robust enough to carry the song. So you don't, you don't have to spend your entire time trying to make all this wowsy, wowsy stuff with uh, sound design when your song may or may not really demand that. Obviously, some songs demand crazy sound design, and that's where you should spend your time. Uh, but for this kind of songwriting, uh, sound design isn't necessarily where you need to be spending your time. You need to be spending your time thinking about the chords and the structure and the harmony and some of the stuff I'm talking about here. And if that's baffling for you or, or you're struggling with the concept, by all means, reach out. It's Matt at Paramind.com. Until um, next time, guys. I will see you later. Don't forget to snap. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest Pyramind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at Pyramind.com.